Once again, a train ride on a dreary morning. This time, Colin and I were headed toward Appenzell in the northeast of the country. While we looked out the windows at the passing landscape, other passengers munched on goodies, relaxed in comfort, or set their fingers flying over their mobile devices. Our accommodation at House Lydia in Appenzell was a lovely, newly modern apartment, home base for the last 10 days of our Swiss holiday. We'd stayed with our hostess, Lydia Mock, on a previous trip 10 years earlier, and returning to her chalet was both familiar and comfortable. The picturesque town of Appenzell lies in a rural valley surrounded by low mountains, a charming town that moves at a sedate pace. The distinctive signs, known as tafin, which are hung mainly in the center of the village, can be found outside many shops as well as inns and restaurants. The decorative designs seen on homes and shops draw heavily on geometric plant and animal motifs. There is often such concentration on one or two motifs that they become strongly identified with the regional style. The prevalence of animal themes, such as the bear, the symbol of the Swiss capital Bern, reflects the importance of animals in Swiss life. The Leuven Pharmacy has painted medicinal herbs on the panels covering the shutters, linking the decoration to the purpose of the building. The narrow, cobbled downtown area offers interesting little shops, with merchandise ranging from weighty cowbells and boots to skeins of fine wool and delicate pastries, and of course, watches and other items to catch the eye of the tourist. St. Mauritius Catholic Cathedral is situated near the river in the business area of Appenzell and is the largest of the local churches. Its simple, solid Baroque exterior gives no hint of the richly decorated interior we found within its walls. The cathedral in Appenzell does not approach the scale of the abbey in St. Gallen, but we were impressed with the grandeur of the decorated apse and lovely frescoes and the rich sound of its seven bells. Perhaps equally interesting was the graveyard behind the cathedral. Each grave facing the rolling Swiss mountains was freshly decorated and pretty, and some included small statues, trinkets, and other gifts beyond the usual flowers.
We wandered through the streets of Appenzell, watching local activity, before stopping at a restaurant for an early supper. Mine's potato and veggies. It looks like, good. Would you like the tomato? No, no. You, you can eat all of it. Probably like that. <laughs> well, that's how I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> Here comes our favorite little train. It stops on demand at the station on the hill behind House Lydia, an eight minute walk at double time from our apartment. On this particular day, we took the train to town and from there, another ride took us to nearby bustling St. Gallen. St. Gallen is a busy city, bigger than nearby Appenzell with both modern and medieval buildings and a slightly offbeat sense of artistic humor, in contrast to the imposing Baroque architecture that dominates the town. It was founded by an Irish monk named Gallus, who established a hermitage around 613 on the site of the current abbey complex, and he lived there until his death in 646. The town grew up around the abbey and became the largest religious city-state in Switzerland. After some early political upheavals, an attempt was made to expand the abbey, but during the project, many of the medieval structures were demolished before being rebuilt in the Baroque style between 1755 and 1768. In the Middle Ages, St. Gallen became an important hub of culture and education and is today a university town with a focus on economic sciences. After we arrived in St. Gallen, we headed on foot for the old part of town, which was full of colossal buildings built centuries ago and meant to last for eons. We walked through narrow streets flooded with locals and tourists navigating the maze of streets and small plazas. We finally found ourselves in the midst of a large complex of huge buildings, once home to the monks of St. Gallen. We entered the imposing cathedral, but were unprepared for the awesomeness of the cavernous, richly ornate interior the apse supported by monstrous columns, the ceilings adorned with marvelous frescoes. We could imagine the sound of the organ, housed at the rear of the cathedral, resounding through that vast space. Somehow, however, the grand cathedral did not inspire the feelings of reverence we found at the Matterhorn, which had about it a feeling of mystery and spirituality. In any case, the cathedral and its associated complex, including a massive library housing many thousands of ancient books, some handwritten and more than a thousand years old, was thoroughly impressive and well worth the several hours we spent in its environs. At the end of the day, we meandered back toward the station, stopping now and then to chuckle over some comical and colorful structures, and took the train home to Appenzell. Parades and celebrations had been scheduled for Corpus Christi Day, 
that ongoing bad weather curtailed the main events. A small crowd of Appenzell people, however, gathered to watch some abbreviated processions of church officials and costumed youths. while women, dressed in magnificent and colourful traditional garb, moved among the crowd. Somewhat incongruously, it seemed, a military parade was also part of the morning's events. Young boys in period uniforms marched with men in combat gear. The relaxed and informal relationship between the townsfolk and the military was obvious. <laughs> 